Hi folks, it's Andy. Welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. Okay, so here we are for another week of fantastic questions. We've got quite a lot for you. Today, uh, I didn't manage to do Kendo Rant last week, so I think that's why we've got extra questions. I'm sort of battling with a bit of a cold as well at the minute, so apologies if I sound a little bit kind of like froggy or like bunged up or something like that, or croaky, whatever. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll get to these in just a minute. Before we do, don't forget, like, share, subscribe. Help somebody start Kendall. What are we at now? Like 567 people or something have started Kendall. Thanks to you guys. Liking, sharing, subscribing, and most importantly, go down there and comment. This is the best Kendall video I've ever seen in my life. If you go and comment something like that, and someone that does Kendall, or doesn't do Kendall yet, but might do Kendall, they're about to start Kendall, like the YouTube algorithm will magically present them with this video or other videos from the channel, and they're gonna start Kendall, and you are gonna have helped increase the Kendall population. You are gonna have helped Kendall spread around the world. So make sure you do that. I think we can get to like at least like 875 people, maybe more, probably, start Kendall by doing that, so make sure you do so. Most importantly though, shop at kendostar.com. Kendostar.com is my website. So of course I would tell you how amazing and brilliant and fantastic it is and how it's the best Kendo equipment website in the known universe. But everyone agrees with me. Look, I know there's pretenders popping up left, right and center. Everyone thinks they can have a go at selling some Kendo equipment from left, wherever. But, You need to be careful where you put your money, let's be honest. All right? <laughs> There's a reason we're, 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 where we are. We're the top of the list. The biggest, the best, the most amazingest in the entire galaxy. Brings to this channel, you get the best equipment. Shop at Kendo Star, all right? Don't be messing around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> everyone agrees with me, like I say, of course I'm going to say this stuff, like I say, I own it, but everyone agrees, right? We're like the best rated on Trustpilot, you know? So put your money somewhere you can trust, kendostar.com, right? Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, might be doing that a little bit because I've got a cold. We're going to get to these questions. One last thing, two last things. No Kendo rant last week, uh, next week. There wasn't one last week. There's not one next week because it is the European Championships and I'm going to be waving my flags around, I hope, for the wonderful competitors who are going to be scoring lots of Ippons because I am there as a Shinpan. So make sure to catch the live stream. Uh, they'll be live streamed. I don't know the links for it yet, but I'll post them on our social media. Um, so yeah, but I won't be able to do Kendo rant because of that. Uh, so the next one will be in two weeks. And the other thing, I put a new video out last week. It's the first episode of Kendo Zero to Sandan. Following on from the brilliant Kendo Zero to Shodan series. <laughs> Me saying it's brilliant, I made it. Of course I'd say it's brilliant. But it's super popular. Kendo Zero to uh, Shodan was a really popular series and Zero to Sandan is essentially like the next step from that. Um, it's designed to be kind of, you know, going into some of it in a bit more in depth. Um, and sort of taking it further as well. So we started with a sort of look at the uh, Kamai used in Kata. So go and watch that if you haven't seen it already. All right, there's more to come. Okay, let's get to these questions. Okay, first one. Hi Andy, very quick one for the next Kendall rant. What sort of etiquette would you expect to see from a Jordan player visiting a new or different dojo? What would you expect uh, of them during practice? Thanks. Um, I think the best thing you can do is first talk to the dojo leader, teacher, the sensei, and say, look, 
actually normally uh, practice in Jordan. Is that okay for me to do so here? Um, I'm sure they'll say yes. Um, and what most people do is like, you can't do it with juniors, all right? So anyone who's under 15, you can't do Jordan against, all right? It's not allowed. And if they're under 18, you can't do Nito with them either. Um, but, uh, yeah, basically, you know, when you're doing Jigeko, for example, go to Sonkyo. What most people do is, as they stand up from Sonkyo, they sort of do a little bow like this, and then they go to Jordan and they, they do the Keiko from Jordan, all right? And then just do your practice as normal, all right? I don't think anything's expected too much, all right? We don't need to make too much of it than, you know, more of it than what there is, yeah? Okay. <clears throat> Next one. Why is there no junior tournament at the WKC? Is there a plan to include it? Is there a plan for even younger category 14 to 16 at the EKC and why not? Uh, opinion on subject appreciated. So this is an interesting question. It's kind of relevant to me because my daughter is sort of in this kind of area at the minute. She'd actually qualified to uh, to, to play in the Euros, uh, European Championships at the EKC. Uh, in the juniors this year, but unfortunately, um, with, within our country, that is, she, she qualified for the national team. But um, the rules changed this year. Uh, previously, it had been uh, 15 to 17 was the was the age range on the uh, the European Junior Championships, but they changed it this year uh, to 16 to 17, which was unfortunate. And my daughter's 15, so uh, she was unable to join. So yeah, she's quite upset about that. <laughs> But it's what it is. Um, in terms of why is there no junior tournament at the World Championships? Because uh, a couple of reasons, really. <laughs> uh, one, um, looking at the rules of the last World Championships, which was cancelled, the minimum age for the World Championships was 16. All right, not 18 like it is in the European Championships. So juniors aged 16 and above, 16 to 17, uh, already can join the World Championships unless they change the rules again. I hope not. Um, please don't. <laughs> um, they already can join the World Championships. Uh, so that's that's that. And if you if you know if you made like a younger category, a, a, a country's really going to take children over to, you know. There's a lot more involved with the junior tournament. Let's be honest, especially on an international level. You know, we travel, looking after them, making sure that all the insurance is fine and all that stuff. And let's be honest, sorry, some people might not like me saying this, but like, if there's one place where there's an even bigger gap between like the Japanese national team and, and the other teams, it's like it would be in like the high school, junior high school level ages. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So yeah. Um, it would be junior high school level, wouldn't it? So, you know, yeah, it would be a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, and then you've got other stuff like school and stuff. They've got to take time off school and everyone's, everyone, all countries have got different school years and stuff. I, I just don't see it happening. All right. And about a younger category for the EKC, I doubt that'll happen either. I just don't see it. Um, I don't think enough countries have got enough juniors to warrant it. Um, and even if they did, uh, again, I don't think the look, you know, there's already like quite a lot of events on the EKC. They're, they're probably going to have to, you know, I think the WKC is getting an extra day next time and they might have to do that at the EKC at some point, but I don't know. Um, personally, rather than a 14 to 16 division, at the um, EKC, my personal preference for the EKC would be for them to have remained at 15 to 17 rather than go 16 to 17, um, but had a separate boys and girls category instead of at the moment it's mixed. All right. And I, I realize that, not, you know, a lot of countries might, you know, might not be able to submit girls, but um, they only need eight for a tournament, right? They only need eight for an individual's. So I'm sure they could do that. Um, and I guess I'm biased because I'm the father to girls, you know what I mean? So like from a, my own point of view, because uh, it, it is, you know, my, my daughter does have a hard time tussling with the, with the boys, especially when they're like 17 and they're a lot bigger than her. 
some of them do a bit kind of alternative Kendall, shall we say. Uh, so, you know, it can be a bit, <laughs> bit difficult for us. So, but you know, I just think it would be a great way, wouldn't it? To like kind of encourage women's Kendall as a whole would be like to start them at that grassroots level. Cause it's quite hard for a young girl to get even in, into the Euros. Um, cause they're up against, you know, like, like I say right now, yeah, they've moved it to 16, but before it was 15. So yeah, you know, my daughter was fighting a bit of an uphill ba battle trying to fight against boys who were two years older than her. So, you know, I'd like to personally see a, 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 a boy, separate boys and girls junior division at the EKC or, or reduce the age of the adult division to 16, like the world championships. Because I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Um, though, I don't, I don't know. It gets a bit complicated, doesn't it? Anyway, next one. Uh, what are some ways to engage your lower body more effectively? All right, so you have to push from your left leg. Keep your hip, hips straight. You can fix this. Like many problems, you fix this with subiri. Okay, you can fix this with subiri. So you can do it on your own. When you're doing your subiri, make sure you're pushing forward with your left leg, keeping your hips straight and your posture straight. And then... Bring up the left foot very quickly, okay? Practice somebody like that diligently. Don't be lazy and be strict on yourself and you'll start to be able to engage your lower body much better, okay? Something I struggled with around like the third, fourth down level. Fix it with somebody. Hi Fish Sensei, thank you for sharing your knowledge with the Kendall community. I've heard that North Americans tend to have very stiff wrists. I don't think it's, I don't think it's like, limited to North Americans. Uh, could you provide some exercise on how we can combat this? Second question, how does someone keep a strong foundation fly backwards when the opponent drives them into tire tight? I know it's possible because I see senior senseis hold their ground against much larger opponents. How do they accomplish this? So, <clears throat> I'm really sorry, my voice is, is, is struggling there with this, but we'll, we'll go on a power through. Okay, so, I think I don't think it's limited to um, North Americans having the stiff wrists. I think every beginner in Kendo has it, even if they're sort of Japanese or whatever. So anyway, there's a couple of things you can do. I think one of the best is like you can do somebody as well, but with you can instead of like lifting up and down, you can turn the shinai this way and like a. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Like this way and that way this way and that way this way and that way uh this exercise and try and keep try and keep your fingers closed if you can it might not it might not uh be possible in the beginning but as you get more flexibility you'll be able to okay um about uh the tire daddy so receiving tire daddy is very very difficult it's not difficult but it's it, 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 there's a bit of a knack to it and it takes it takes practice um so the first thing you've got to do is you've got to plant your left leg and push with your left leg and you've got to time it so that you do a sort of mini tayatari together with them so that it's not like this way but kind of like as they come in there's a kind of this thing like that so it's like this like that okay so you can actually do a mini for me call me with your right right leg bam, this way to make sure that you don't end up going backwards okay that's uh that's the best way to do it in practice. It's just practice. I'm afraid. Uh, so, <laughs> next one. Hi, Fish Sense. I always hope all is well. A couple of questions this week. In the last tournament, I went to, I bought a brand new Shinai that I had had for over a year in the bag and everything. When I got to the Shinai check, I, it failed the weight by a couple of grams. Oof, I hate it when that happened. Same thing when the Shinai had been regularly using that I also brought. Ended up buying a Shinai then, uh, all was well. Is it a common problem? Is it just uh, related to living in a desert and ha not having humidity? Also, how would you combat the issue? Just oil it more often. Secondly, do you have any tips for filming Kendall? We've been recording our Kendall more often due to dojo, small dojo size and also recording our tournament in Shinso when possible. Seems difficult, especially in public venues, to get the quality videos where you can see everything. Just wondering if you've got any tips or tricks that you figured out uh, or seen news. Thanks. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, the Shinai thing. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's definitely affected by humidity. If they dry out, they're gonna get lighter, okay? Uh, she and I also do sort of fluctuate in like weight, all right? So if you weigh a Shinai today, and it's, let's say it's like 512 grams, so that's cutting it fine, isn't it? Then you weigh it in a week's time, it might not be 512 grams, it might be 509 grams, or it might be 516 grams. Yeah, because they change slightly, okay? And the thing is there is like, if it's 509, it fails, right? So how do you combat that? Especially if you're using them as well, because they like bits chip off or whatever, you know. Um, <clears throat> how do you combat them? Yeah, oil it more often, keep them regularly oiled. And the good thing to do as well is if you're going to a tournament, like three days before the tournament, oil it then. <laughs> okay, oil it three days before the tournament so that it soaks in. Two or three days before, when you get to the tournament, it'll be, should be all right in that case, okay? It's only a couple of grams out, right? So it's it's definitely going to be a uh, an issue of, you know, of humidity rather than the Shania itself. Okay, as for your second question, secondly, do you have any tips for filming? So, um, it is always a hard one. It is, especially like at a public event because people are walking around and shimp and move around and stuff like that. There's not a lot you can do about it, unfortunately. Um, I don't really have many tips for you on that front. I, I just put my, I usually put my phone or my camera on a tripod and um, hope for the best. <laughs> Try to put it somewhere that's least likely to get interrupted. But you're never going to film perfectly unless you've got like a, a, a cameraman. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, unfortunately, there's not there's not a great deal that can be done about it. Uh, next one. Hi, Sensei. Do you have any advice for getting the most out of Jigeko with your seniors? Ha <laughs> ha. I don't mind being hit. Uh, I know that's not the point, but sometimes I feel I'm bashing my head against the wall repeatedly with none of my techniques landing and constantly receiving Devana or Kai Shibata. How do I know I'm improving? How can I maximize value through these engagements? I often feel like I'm missing nuances from their kendo, like I'm not picking up what they're trying to teach me. Many thanks always uh, for your time and advice. Thank you. Um, okay. Mm. It's difficult, isn't it? It depends on your relationship with that senior and how senior they are, all right? If there is like two Dan grades or more difference between you and that senior, then don't, you know, don't worry about <clears throat> how successful your strikes are, all right? Your job isn't to beat them or to strike them more than they struck you. That isn't the goal of your Keiko, all right? So what I'm saying is, is, you know, you're bashing your head, you feel like you're bashing your head because none of your techniques land. That's because you're using your techniques being successful as a metric to gauge your success in that Keiko, and that's wrong in the beginning. All right, so if, if, if they're like, let's say you're, let's say you're first Dan, and they are fourth or fifth Dan, all right? <laughs> you shouldn't be able to just hit them at, all the time, all right? And if you do, great. If you, if you do make strikes, great. But that isn't the purpose of, the, of your Keiko with them, all right? You should be using them to improve your kendo in other ways, and that isn't by just giving yourself positive reinforcement by landing successful techniques, all right? Um, instead, you should be trying to make strikes at, you know, with with full spirit and stemi, and what you feel like could be a good opportunity or if it's, especially if it's a high grade sensei, if your sensei is like sixth dan, seventh dan, eighth dan, then, you know, and you're like first dan, second dan, of course you're not gonna find the good opportunity against them, all right? But they're gonna like do stuff like step in and pressure you. The last thing you wanna be doing is like stepping back and blocking stuff like this and start trying to compete with them because that isn't the purpose of your keiko with them, all right? Just go. If you do, if you receive the Dibano as a Kaisu as a, anything like that, Fine, because it's not a competition as to who uh, who makes the most successful strikes. Okay. Um, whilst you're doing that, you need to concentrate and watch what kind of techniques the sensei is getting you to do. 
Um, and maybe there's a message in there as to what they're trying to teach you. Um, maybe not. Sometimes there isn't, all right? Uh, maybe they just want to practice their kaishido or devanaza on you. And that's fine because you can use that to improve your kendo by polishing your spirit and your uh, ability to throw away the fear of receiving a strike. Okay? And that's really, really important. It's really important. Um, and you'll know you're improving because you'll get that ma messaging from when you do Gokaku Geiko, which is with your peers who are of a similar grade as you. So maybe someone who's the same grade as you or within two dan grades of you, let's say. Um, in which case, that is more of a situation where successful strikes become more of a metric of how to measure your success in the Keiko. All right. But what I really want to get across is I want you to move away from feeling like you're bashing your head against your wall with none of your techniques landing because you, whether your techniques land or don't doesn't matter. Okay. That isn't how you measure your success in the Keiko against the high level teacher. Okay. It's not about how many points you can score against a high level teacher. It's about how you can use their experience and their, um, their presence in a way um, to, to polish your own ability, okay? It's not easy. It's not easy because you want to make successful strikes and feel good about yourself. That's what you've got to overcome is that ego of wanting to make a successful strike and feeling like you're good and impressing them and have them tell you how good you are, yeah? That's the hard bit, is overcoming that. Do you know what I'm saying? It's hard, isn't it? It's hard. Don't get me wrong, I don't manage it all the time either. Uh, hello again, Fushisensei, I'm getting pumped. I'm ready to go to the AUSKF Nationals at the end of June. I just heard about this. So good, I'm not gonna lie. It's my own fault, I should have done more, more research. I didn't know that it was at the end of June. That's the or the US Kennel Championships. It's once in three years. I've been there twice. And what a great tournament it is. I really wanted to go this time. And I can't because I've got something else on the same dates. Wish I'd known. I wish I'd done my research and arranged things differently. And now I'm going to have to wait another three years until I can go to the next one. But I'll go to the next one, okay? And after reading Mr. Barry Stevens' question, it uh, sparked one of my own. At the moment, I have several kotogata large grip shinai, but given the need for tip speed during shiai, I'm considering getting some door body style. Over the last few years, I've become quite accustomed to the larger 30 millimeter grip because how much better my hands feel after practice. Now, for my question, when it comes to verifying the weight of the shinai at the tournament, is the wider diameter grip in conjunction with the wider hushi going to potentially be a problem? Just want to make sure before investigating, uh, investing in another set of shinai. Welcome to recommendations from the Kendall Stock Catalog. Okay. No, uh, they don't measure the diameter of the grip. Okay, and they don't actually measure the diameter of the door, which is what I think you mean by fushi. Um, let me get a shinai here. Okay, the fushi is, this is a fushi, this, these little nodes, they're the fushi. Okay, I think what you mean is the door, which is this part, right? Um, the door, this part. This is, a, this is, it's one of my daughter's shinai actually that was given to her by someone. Um, that's why it's a 39, she's 50, it's too big for her, she uses it for somebody. Um, so, yeah, the, 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 this part, they don't measure this part and they don't measure the, this part, all right? They measure how th the diameter of this part and eight centimeters down, they measure this part, it's called the chikato, okay? And then they measure the weight, all right? They don't measure the thickness of the grip, all right? So a 30 millimeter door body shinai, no problem at all. No problem at all, super popular actually. Lots of people love them and use them in matches. And as for recommendations, yes, you want to get Coren. It's called Coren. K-O-U-R-E-N. I'll write it on here. Coren. All right. You want this shinai. <clears throat> Fantastic. Large grip. 30 mil. Door body shinai. 
if you like, um, like the 30 mil Koto Gato we've got is Nichirin To. Nichirin To. Uh, this is the um, Koto version. It's not the version, this is this is a slightly more expensive Shinai because it's a slightly higher cut of bamboo, grade, grade cut of bamboo. But Koren is one of our most popular models. It's a fantastic door body, large grip Shinai. All right, so go and get yourself some of them. You'll love them. If you like the large grips, you're gonna love them. Morning coffee. I'm still getting told that I'm too tense in Shi'ai and Gigeko. There's no such thing as Gigeko. You mean Gigeko. <laughs> it's my Japanese spelling time with Andy. <laughs> it's a super common thing, right? Lots of people spell Gigeko like this, but there's no soft G in Japanese. G in Japanese is always a hard G, okay? So there is no Gigeko. It's Jigeko, okay? I won't go into the reasons why, but that's just how it is, okay? <laughs> However, during Sabidi, I can relax. I think it's maybe due to my overzealous ki during matches, whereas in Sabidi, I do not ki, okay? I ki as loud as I possibly can. I admit it's probably too loud. I try to do it like I've seen Sumi Sensei demonstrate in this video. Yeah, I've seen that video. Uh, however, I'm now guessing that doing such intense ki, especially doing shi'ai, is making me look tense. Recently, a visiting sensei said he appreciates that I give it 100% effort and focus. But he said that I'm externalizing all of my energy. He then recommended that I learn how to focus my energy internally into the Kensen. And this is a new concept for me. Fish Sensei, do you have any suggestions on how I can still give 100% to my ki and maintain Zanshin without turning into the Incredible Hulk? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I know exactly what's happening, all right? You're getting a bit too carried away, all right? Calm down a bit. Okay, just calm down a bit. You can shout loud, that's great. Yeah! Okay. Remember, and I've, I've sort of scanned over these questions already, so this is relevant to another question that we're coming to later. But remember, the first hase or kakegoe yeah, is towards the opponent, okay? So you're projecting your intention towards them. Yeah! Not just, yeah! But just screaming loud at nobody in particular, okay? So, don't get too, like, wound up. <laughs> like this, yeah? Doesn't have to be that much, okay? Yeah! And then, focus towards the opponent. Relax, but focus towards the opponent. And not just overdoing the shouting. You don't need to shout after that until you hit. What and then everything goes, yeah? Well, I think what happens is, is when we get to this point where we're like overdoing the shouting, like it, it like becomes a bit emotional for want of a better word. And we kind of get like sort of thing. And you don't want to be like that, all right? Now, it's all easier said than done. Right, and if you know, if you're at the sort of beginning stages, like if you're under Sandan, for example, it's going to come with time and practice, all right, and experience. So don't beat yourself up over it too much, it will come, but just try to relax a bit more, all right, and don't think about just screaming, yeah. It's a projection of your intention towards your opponent, all right, not just ah, yeah. This way, towards the, towards the opponent, okay? Practice, time. Unfortunately, the only main answers are solutions, I should say. Hello, Fish Sensei, I'm new to Kendo. One thing which is uh, readily apparent, apparent to me is the proper way to do everything. Yes, tying the knots for the Kendo Gi Hakama, tying the Menhimo, Dohimo. Exactly, this is very, very true. I've seen videos and read how to fold hakama for storage, boga storage, etc. However, I've been unable to find anything on how to dress the menhimo for storage and transportation. What's your preferred method? So um, the menhimo, like for my uh, for my boga, there's two things you can do. You can either just fold them up 
like fold them, fold them up or sort of wrap them up and then put them inside the men. Or what I actually tend to do is, I actually tend to tie the men when I'm not using it, all right? So I tie it as if it's on my head, okay? And then it helps me shape it a little bit. So that's what I normally do uh, as I transport it about. And then when I get to the door, I untie it before I, before I put it on, okay? <coughs> Voice is holding up, okay? Hi, Sensei, I hope you're well. Almost well. <laughs> I'm a lot better today than I was yesterday, actually. I was much worse yesterday. I'm, I'm, I'm coming out of the other side of it. I'm a bit nervous because it's the European Championships next week and I'm going to have to start shouting whilst I'm doing shimpan, right? So I'm a bit nervous about that too. But I'm sure I'll be fine. It's in France. I have really bad luck with European Championships in France. No offence, France. I'm sorry. But last time I went to France for the European Championships, I was really sick as well. Really sick. Anyway, <laughs> I, hope you I met my fiance when she started Kendall. <clears throat> now we train together for the last 10 years. Fantastic, congratulations. Uh, we're both extremely familiar with each other's Kendall, which is great for syncing during pra kata practice, uh, but not so much during Keiko. When we practice to Keiko, we both find that our semi is completely ineffective against each other and we're completely in tune with what the other's going to do. I was wondering if this is an issue uh, you've had to overcome with your wife. <laughs> uh, if you know anyone else who had the issue, and what the best way to try and make our cake all together uh, more beneficial for both of us might be. Thanks for again for everything you do with the channel. Thank you. Um, so, all right. Uh, <laughs> so, it's a little bit of a different situation with me and uh, me and, uh, and my wife because. Um, she uh, she already did Kendall when I met her. She'd done Kendall for longer than I had. Uh, she's already a higher grade than me at the time. At the time. <laughs> and, uh, um, even though she did, she'd had a she'd had a she'd had a bit she just had a blank from Kendall for for about sort of I don't know ten years or something. Um, not quite ten years. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> I think she was fourth. Yeah, she was fourth done already when I met her, and I was I was uh, third done. Um, so like she was senior to me in the beginning. <laughs> so it's not like we like learned Kendall together. Do you know what I mean? Like she started teaching me Kendall. Um, if anything, and the thing is, is and it is funny. Um, it is one of the reasons it has been really beneficial for my Kendall development. It's because, you know, we've got such a close relationship outside of the dojo. Kendall is like, one of the really interesting and wonderful things about Kendall is, and I really believe this, and I really, uh, it seems to be borne out in evidence from what I've seen, is people's like personality is like reflected in their Kendall, right? So it means if you know someone really well and you're really close to them, exactly as you're saying, there's like, there's like an ability, not an ability, but yeah, you know, you kind of sync in a different way. Um, and if you know each other really, really well, or like it's the same with people who train together all the time, you know, it becomes harder for things to, for your techniques to work because they, they sort of already know you're going to do it. Um, and in <laughs> with, with my wife and I, you know, for a very long time, it was like, she just knew what I was going to do and when I was going to do it. And cause, you know, she was, she was, she was more experienced than me, uh, than me, you know, she used to just be able to hit the bottom men on me whenever she wanted. Cause she knew it was really obvious when I was going to hit men. It wasn't until I started developing my own kendo as well. that I was like, okay. <clears throat> Now I've got to start approaching the cake or differently with her and I have to try and break away from my normal pattern. So it's been a, it's, it's always a really good experience for me because I have to try and, you know, I can't rely on stuff that always works for me because she sees it coming a mile off. Yeah. So I have to instead like 
try and break my normal pattern or rhythm or try and move in a different way, maybe try and, you know, it, it's a, and it's a good thing, it's a great thing because, you know, uh, it means that I've got to work harder, yeah? And um, I, think, I think it's a good thing. I think you're in a really, really great situation to have that. Um, I think what you'll find is that the cake you're having is beneficial. But what, what you need to do is you don't want to just end up like, like, what can I say? You know, uh, just like doing the same thing over and over again. If your semi doesn't work, okay, try something different that you don't normally do. I don't mean some weird, like, weird technique. I mean, think about the way you approach you know, each other slightly differently in a different rhythm or pattern than you might do otherwise, or maybe make, you know, you know what I mean? You have to use your brain more is to get essentially what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Um, and it, it can be one, a really, really amazing, fantastic tool. It really can. All right. So, um, yeah, I hope that helps and, and wish you the best with it because I think, I think you're in a really lucky situation that not a lot of us, um, are able to experience. Hello, Fish Sensei. I hope you're well. Do you know any plans to change the Shinpan rule book to incorporate the COVID rules at any time soon? I want to encourage some of our Dojo members to get this book so that we become more familiar with the actual text. Thanks in advance. Um, no, I don't know of any such plans. Um, there's a couple of documents to put out in PDF format. I cannot see them adding that to the official rule book, right? Because they're still nowhere near at the point where they're going to make them like official permanent rules um there's still too many parts that they're gonna keep tweaking for the next few years i would say um and another thing and this is just my personal opinion i've got no information about this whatsoever i think they're gonna move away a bit from the printed books um i think they're gonna move away from it and i think you're gonna find that the rule book maybe in 10 years time um, it's going to be just a, a, a downloadable PDF uh, rather than the actual uh, book. But I don't know. I might be wrong on that. I might be wrong. Um, but uh, no, I, I don't. I don't. I, I don't know of any um, plans to do that, and I don't actually see them doing it either. All right. It's the best thing is just buy the book and then um, print off the extra pages. Hello, Sensei. Another question. What, in your opinion, is the optimal state of mind for Shi'ai? I've seen a lot of people use rage and aggression, myself included. Yeah, it's not that. Uh, but recently at a seminar, I noticed Kenshi similar to my level uh, to Kiai and Stiffen. It's interesting to me, and I wondered if I appeared stiff to other during, uh, others during engagements as well. I received a comment from a Sensei about my Ki being dispersed. He said that my Kiai was loud. It wasn't directed at him. What I understood was uh, that he was saying my focus was not on him, but on myself, my strike, my kamai, etc. How can I practice this? What sort of mindset is best in Shi'ai? Thanks, as always. Okay, so this is really similar to the previous question. So the advice is the same, yeah? Remember that your shout, first off, rage and aggression are not, are not the state of mind that you want in Shi'ai. You will not win Shi'ai with, with that sort of mindset, all right? Your opponent isn't there for you to destroy, okay? Um, even in the Shi'ai, okay? You have to win the match as much as you can, but you, you, you're not looking to sort of obliterate their existence. <laughs> you know, uh, maybe in a metaphorical sense, but not in a literal sense. So the, the mindset for Shi'ai has to be somewhat calm but maximum concentration okay and that's difficult because there's controlled bursts of of course aggression because you are attacking but you have to be in control of that and you have to be in control of your emotions all right but you have to be in a state of maximum concentration uh, i think is the key part of it and about the ki or the shouting, yes. Remember, the shout is to impart your intention towards your opponent. Yeah! Towards them. To project that. Not, 
Yeah, everybody, I'm here to do Kendall. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like this. No, that's not right either. Okay. So, mm, the rest is the same as what I said before, but I think it's really, really relevant. Okay. I hope it makes sense. Okay, last one. I'm going to take some medicine. <laughs> Hello, Sensei. So, for starters, I sadly scratched my red doll. What can I do to fix it and make it less noticeable? Secondly, I've developed a bit of a bunny hop when escaping my opponent, even in my Ash Sabaki. What can I do to stop it? And lastly, when tying the Hakamai in the front, how far down from the top should we tie it? Thank you, as always, uh, for all you do for the Kendall community. Thank you. So, your red doll. They get scratched. It's kind of part of it, all right? So don't sweat it too much. Get a soft cloth and buff it, all right? Give it a rub and a buff with a soft cloth, and that's about the best that you can do. They're going to get scratched. Someone's going to smack them with a the shinai over and over again, all right? Unfortunately, that's their job, okay? So, yeah. About your bunny hop. You fix it with smoothie. <laughs> that sounds nuts, but it's true. You fix it with smoothie, right? Like I said to the person who was asking about engaging the lower body, the lower body's not engaged, that's why you're bunny hopping. Okay? So push with the push with the left and bring it up quickly and make sure you're pushing forward from the hips and concentrate when you're doing sabuti, okay? And do it at home, concentrating on that, all right? And your body will remember it, okay? It's, it literally is that. And about where you tie the hakamai and how down from the front. So for me, it's like that far. <laughs> the reason I answered it like that is because it's different for everybody, all right? It's find where it's comfortable to do it, all right? Find where it's comfortable to do it. At the end of the day, it's supposed to sort of, sort of support your tendon, isn't it? Which is like your lower abdomen. But it's different for everybody. Okay, so there's no like how many centimeters or whatever. It's different for everybody. Okay, so experiment. Find where it's most comfortable, feels the best, and gives you the best support. And uh, all that much. Okay, can't see it under the tire anyway. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you for joining me today. I'm sorry once again for my croaky voice and my bunged up nose. Sorry about it. I'd like to say I'll see you next week, but I won't because I'll be at the Europeans waving my flags around. So instead, you can join me in two weeks. Make sure that you watch the Euros. I think it's going to be good. I think there's going to be some good matches live streamed i'll post the links on our social medias you can wave to me on the screen i won't be able to see you of course because that's not how the internet works but you know <laughs> all right that's it what a great friday have a great weekend everybody hope it's filled with kendall and i'll see you next time bye bye shop with kendall stuff <laughs>